Right, so we're now going to create a project using that profile motor you've got and the workbench using CubeMX and True Studio. So we're going to use all the elements now to build an actual project. And once we've got the project, then we can actually do some configuration inside the software. So all the configuration is going to be done using the workbench. So we're going to show you some of the features. Then I'll hand over to my two power colleagues here who will be able to talk you through some of the other features that we're not playing with today because there's a lot of features and a lot of variables you can control from this MC Workbench tool. Using the tool, we're going to generate the project firmware. So we're not going to go into CubeMX yet to generate the firmware. We're going to use the Workbench to actually generate the firmware for us. Then we'll use True Studio this time. So can we actually build the firmware and then program into our target board? So we're actually going to use the IDE properly this time, rather than just using the binary file that we've used in the past. So we need to open our motor control workbench again. So you can close the profiler now. And we're going to open the motor control workbench. And we're going to go for a new project this time. And if we select the inverter tab, and then we should find our pair of boards, which is the F303 and the IHM16 in there. So you have to hit the inverter tab first to get to the particular ones that we're after. Then you select your motor that you saved earlier. So there's mine, gimbal COP. And it should have taken in the parameters that we've seen. And then you can click OK. So we've told the tool exactly what hardware we've got and exactly which motor we've got connected now. So we can say OK to that. And then it tells you exactly what parameters have been brought in to the project. So you can say OK for that one. So now we're going to generate the firmware. So we're going to generate some code. And that is by this blue down pointing arrow. So up here, We've got this blue down pointing arrow, which is generation. So if you click on that, this will now go off and generate our project. We have to give it a location. I'm going to call it zero three. Zero three in that. And if we say save, then you'll get prompted with the tools that it's going to use. There we go. So you need to select your CubeMX version. So we're going to choose Choose Studio because that's the one that we installed in our zip file. But all the tools are in there. So IAR's in there, Kyle's in there. So it means we're not restricting you to just using True Studio. And down here, you've got the ability to take low level if you want to. But we're going to stay with HAL today. Yes, it's going to give us bigger code, but uh, it's easier for us to work with for when it comes to typing the extra commands later. So we've got to actually do a bit of coding later on. So if we stay in the HAL, then it's easier for us to work with because the coding's a lot easier for later on. So once you've got that, you should be able to then generate and it should go off and build your code. That might take a while. So once you've uh, done the build and you've got build complete, you can close that box. And there is a nice quick way to launch the Atollic. You can actually just double click on the last line that's been put in your log file. Because you can uh, double click on there. It should open a Windows Explorer window, like mine has done, which is in the correct place. Hands on Workspace 03, as I call mine. You double click in True Studio, into the Workspace, and the dot project and it should automatically go and launch your Atollic. So you double click on this line here. So project files generated on folder that. You can double click on that line. That will then launch a Windows Explorer box. You will have to go into your project name, then into the True Studio folder, then into the Workshop 0 number again, and then double click on the dot project. And that should automatically launch your True Studio. The first pop-up box here you've got is telling you where do you want your workspace saved. So your workspace can be somewhere different to where your project is. In fact, it has to be somewhere different. In Eclipse, the workspace has to be one folder higher than the project. 
because there's metadata stored in the workspace. If they're at the same level, it, Windows gets confused or Eclipse gets confused. It always has to be one folder below. So please select a location for your workspace. You have to make sure that the folder structure is so that your workspace is one higher than the project folder if they're in the same directory tree. Only if they're in the same directory tree. So I've put mine in a completely different directory tree, my workspace. So I've just created a folder called Atollic and Workspace on the root of C. Um, I'm leaving my project at the address wherever it was by default, which is quite a way below where my workspace is going to be. So if you are putting them in the same location, just make sure the project is one below the uh, workspace. So in this case, you would have to make sure your workspace folder is sat somewhere in hands-on if you were putting them in the same tree. It's your decision, you can put it where you want, you just got to obey by that rule. So once you've done that, you can okay your workspace and your Atollic will now launch and eventually True Studio should open. You might get a welcome screen which you might have to close uh, for True Studio to get the view that I've got there. So what you need to do, we'll go into the code later on in the afternoon. What you need to do now is highlight your workshop number you've created. I've got three in there at the moment. You just only have one. And then you need to hit the hammer icon, which is the build. So if you click that, it'll go off and build the code, hopefully, with zero errors and zero warnings, I'm hoping. It takes a while sometimes. And when it's done all this, you'll actually get to see how large your code is in a minute. It'll tell you somewhere here when it gets there. There we go. So I'm currently at 38K for my code. So once you've built, then you can hit the debug icon, which is the strange insect looking like icon there, or you can press F11. It'll change the view into the debug perspective. So again, Eclipse works in compiler perspective and debug perspective. So once this section here has been populated, then you can hit the, what looks like a play button. It's actually called resume your software should be running again on your board. So now if you press your blue button, your motor should start. And if you press your blue button again, your motor should stop. So if you go back to your workbench now, if you now click on your monitor button again, and you connect, connect. Now you should be able to control it as well from the monitor. So you've now built the project. You're in the debug screen in your IDE and your monitor screen is actually working and you can control it through the workbench. So, so even I've, I've got it there to clear any faults. So as I said, sometimes it'll store when you try and launch things. So you have to hit the faults acknowledge button and it will work. And it should still work through the blue user button as well as you found out.